These blocks of flats are often seen as something typically East German. They provided living space for millions of East Germans. They go by the name of Plattenbau. Coming up. Hi and welcome to another East Germany investigated video. Plattenbau is a method of construction making use of prefabricated concrete slabs, in English known as large panel system building. Because it's East Germany, I will mostly use the word Plattenbau from now on, and also because it has less syllables. Using large pieces of prefabricated concrete makes the construction process a lot quicker than the conventional bricks and mortar method. The German Democratic Republic was not the only country that had Plattenbau flats, but it definitely was the international leader in prefabricated building. But Plattenbau is not something that originated in East Germany. The origin of building with prefabricated concrete can be found in the United States, France and England. In France, at the end of the 19th century, important inventions were made regarding reinforced concrete, which the French started using in industrial construction. In England, the first house made entirely of prefabricated concrete was built in 1905. However, it was in the United States where in 1918, on Long Island, New York, the first complete housing project was built using 170 standardized precast concrete panels for each house. Grosvenor Atterbury, who invented this system, exported it to Europe, where in Amsterdam and Berlin, the settlements Betondorp, which literally means concrete village by the way, and the Splanemansiedlung were built. And with the Splanemann Siedlung in 1926, Plattenbau had arrived in Germany. Strictly speaking, technically, the name Plattenbau does not really apply to these kinds of housing because they were made out of concrete blocks, not out of slabs. But the methods of construction are both popularly known as Plattenbau, the umbrella term so to speak. Also around 1920, the French-Swiss architect Le Corbusier experimented with reinforced concrete construction and he was convinced that building this way was the future. Le Corbusier is often seen as one of the pioneers of prefabricated concrete construction. Critics have blamed him for the soullessness of modern urban development. With his Plan Voisin, for example, he made a plan for the reconstruction of a large part of the center of Paris, where old buildings would be replaced by modern skyscrapers. Luckily, this plan was never executed. In the years that followed, the focus was on cost cutting. It was compared with the Ford company, which had succeeded in reducing the production costs of its Model T by 50% between 1913 and 1928 by focusing on improving efficiency. Lots of experimentation and optimization was done in those years, without which the post-war prefabricated industrialized building of homes would not have been possible. And industrialization was indeed the next important steps in the development of the Plattenbau. In the beginning, the concrete elements were poured at the construction site and after a drying time of about 10 days, they could be picked up by a crane and put in position. In the mid-1950s, in France, the first factory to manufacture the concrete straps was built by Raymond Camus. He became the worldwide market leader. At the beginning of the 1960s, the Camus system was used in France, Germany, Austria, but also in some African countries and in the Soviet Union. For the GDR, the standards describing how the new prefabricated buildings should be planned and built came from the Soviet Union, where they had a much larger shortage of homes. When Soviet leader Khrushchev came to power, he criticized the previous construction policy from the Stalin era, saying that the old way of building lacked comfort for its inhabitants and that too much was spent on the facades. Under Khrushchev, in the space of only 10 years, more than 100 million Soviet citizens were able to move into a new home. In the GDR, this also led to a change in the way that housing was built. In the GDR, the first factory for prefabricated elements was put into operation in 1957. The first large projects started in Hoyerswerda, where the factory was located. Then Halle, Rostock, Schwerin, Leipzig, Erfurt, Chemnitz, at that time still called karl marx and Berlin followed. Marzahn in Berlin was the biggest residential area of all, becoming home to 100,000 residents. In the decades that followed, the number of different types and designs was reduced for efficiency reasons. Also the number of different elements was reduced, which had led to large improvements in efficiency during the production of the concrete slabs. 
Many East Germans long to move into a new apartment with better heating, cold and warm water and a bathroom and a toilet that you didn't have to share with others, as was the case in the old apartments that were mostly in a poor state of repair. For political reasons, the rents had been frozen at the level of 1936, so landlords were not really motivated to do maintenance. The reason why the government kept the rents low was to keep the people quiet. What the GDR leaders realized too late was that the people took their low rents as a given, so the low rents ultimately did not outweigh the other things that East Germans were dissatisfied about. We all know how it ended. Back to the Plattenbau homes. They were highly popular with everyone. Also, the social mix was very pleasing. Doctors lived next to workers. But the Plattenbau flats also had disadvantages. The monotony of the huge mass-produced housing complexes. And inside, insulation was an issue. You could easily hear your neighbors. And thermal insulation was also poor. Which is the reason why the Plattenbau buildings that still exist have often lost their original appearance. It has been changed by the addition of thermal insulation panels. There were several types of prefabricated building. Until 1970, most houses in East Germany were built according to the building block method, where different kinds and sizes of concrete blocks were used, as had been done in the Splanemann estate. The first concrete slab factory produced slabs of the so-called Type P1, which was the first series that, as of 1957, made it possible to prefabricate complete buildings that could be assembled in a short time at the construction site. The P1 series apartment blocks had either four or eight floors and were built all over East Germany until 1970. In 1962, Type P2 was introduced. It had an interior stairwell and inside the apartments the kitchens had no windows. But to get some direct daylight into the kitchen a new feature was added. A serving hatch between the kitchen and the living room. The P2 blocks had between 5 and 12 floors and there were also a number of regional variations of the series. Construction was continued until 1990. In total more than half a million apartments of this series have been built. But the most commonly produced type is the WBS 70 series, where WBS stands for Wohnungsbauserie, Apartment Construction Series, and the number 70 refers to the 1970s. Around 640,000 WBS 70 housing units were produced. It was the most common building series in the GDR during the last 15 years of its existence. The WBS 70 is the most highly developed type of Plattenbau in the GDR. By this means the GDR was able to make giant strides in the quantity of new homes. The wide variety of standard sizes of the slabs offered many possibilities that unfortunately were only partly explored. The main reason behind this was the pressure from the party leadership to cut costs. WBS 70 apartment buildings have 5, 6 or 11 floors and can be found throughout East Germany. Back in 1973, East Germany's leader Erich Honecker had promised to build 3 million new homes by 1990. At the end of the 1980s it was officially announced that this target had been achieved. But these statistics were fake. In reality, about 2 million homes had been completed. The original plan envisaged the renovation of old buildings as well, but many buildings, some of them of historic value, were torn down and replaced by Plattenbau blocks. Why? Because it was the cheaper option. Large parts of the historical town center of Bernau, for example, which was made up of half-timbered buildings, were demolished in the 1980s, and new concrete ones arose in their place. Many of the Plattenbau buildings had artistic elements, mostly attached to their walls. In most cases they were depictions of an idealized socialist society. But it was not all just propaganda. Starting in the 1960s, art was not only seen as part of the building, but more as part of the design of the urban space. After reunification, 
unemployment rates in the former GDR grew drastically so that a lot of East Germans moved to the larger cities such as Berlin or to the western part of the country in order to find a job. As a result, a lot of apartments became empty, in some cases even leading to complete ghost towns. In order to maintain a safe living environment, many of the blocks have been demolished over the last 30 years, including the art that went with them. Although more will certainly be torn down in the future, luckily a number of the buildings have become listed monuments, and the list is still growing. And in many areas, after modernization, living in a Plattenbau apartment is cool again. Plattenbau blocks have left their marks on the East German landscape. The quality of the buildings is still good enough, so they definitely will be around for a few more decades. Especially after they've been brought up to modern standards. For those of you who are interested in books covering the topic of today, I found two great books that have been published quite recently and that describe the full history of the Plattenbau and have a huge numbers of uh, photographs and technical drawings. The books are currently only available in German, but um, an English version is planned. I contacted the uh, publisher and I very quickly got a kind reply back from the writer himself, who states that the English version of the books uh, are currently scheduled for the summer of 2024. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.